the howling of a gearbox, the buzz of an electric engine, or the wheeze of an electric converter. These sounds are so bad because they have these tonal components in there and therefore has to be checked and analyzed by acoustic engineers. But what kind of analysis should I use? What works the best? A classic FFT analysis does not reflect this effect. It's more like pocking in the dark. I usually say if you're doing a presentation and need circles and arrows to present the area where your problem is, these guys don't need a better scaling, you just use the wrong analysis. Speaking about tonality, well, there is a wide variety of tonality analysis, but some of these results seem to give inconsistent results and few of them seem to bring out just crap. In this tutorial, I will explain the tonality analysis, what they are meant for and where you should not use these kind of analysis. So if you watch the full tutorial, you understand what kind of analysis you can use on your test objects. So the next time you will have a tonality problems, you can be the hero of your company. And to make this clear right from the start, this is not the getting started with acoustic analysis tutorial. This tutorial is for professionals. Are you ready? So welcome to the course. I've collected some typical measurements with all have tonality problems and have here a collection of tonality analysis which all can be applied to this and then we can see which is the best which kind of recording. If you do not have time to watch this full video and you say ah, it seems like my office is burning and I need it, just tell me what kind of analysis should I take which will be probably the best. And you can just skip to the end of the video. The last five, six minutes, I will give a comprehensive uh, result. So this is fine. But I recommend to go back maybe tomorrow and see the full video so you can have an idea and you understand why this analysis works better than the other analysis. Because there will be questions coming to you and say, what do you use and where does it come from? Okay. So let's start with the first example. It's a simple fan run up. Oh, if you have headphones, please use them. I really recommend this. I will play a lot of files and to understand what you hear and see, it's good to have good playback. Um, the fan run up. I simply start with FFT versus time and analysis everybody knows. And I will just recalculate it to watch it in the Mark Analyzer. So as you can see here, um, well, this is easy. There's one clear tone going up over the RPM. Um, well, we can maybe just listen to this one. Yeah. That's bad. Obviously, tonal component in there. Um, here, everything's clear. But if you listen carefully, you also hear there's some random noise from the air. But we have to concentrate on this because this is so dominant. But of course, this noise around, this, this wind noise also gets higher the faster this, the, the fan is rotating. And with this example, we reach the main topic. We can separate noise in two kinds of draws. Let me say it this way. One will be a tone, one kind of noise. This is a repeating signal, always the same and really narrow banded. It's like a sinus. Okay. On the opposite, exactly the the opposite thing is random noise. This is a broad banded, uncorrelated, like this. No repetition at all. And as big this difference between these two kinds of noises is, the same big is the difference it has on our human perception. Uh, random noise, like calms us down. There are apps or CDs you can play if you have problems to sleep. Let's say it goes like this, and you get tired of stretch, and everything is fine. The tone had exactly the different effect on you. What, 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 what? It makes you awake. If you have a tone after the disco, you have a tone inside here, a tinnitus, you will not be able to sleep, okay? Big difference. And this difference is so clear to all people that we use this even to communicate. 
if there's a big crowd and I want to speak to all the crowd and I want to draw attention, please listen to me, what should I do? I take a glass and make ding, 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 and everyone was watching. Tone. And then the next reaction, I want to calm down the big audience. Everyone make shh. It calms everyone down, okay? Got this. Tone, wake you up. Noise brings it down. So the main question, if you think about sound quality is, if I have a noise recorder, what is bigger? What has a bigger scale? If there is more noise, random noise in there, or is the tone has a higher level? And that's what we should do. Let's see in our example. So in my recording, manually, I would check the levels by using a cursor and say, okay, this is one, and there the random noise is there. Then I can read, okay, this is 51 against 36, so more tone than just random noise. Uh, but you should be careful. If you zoom in, I see, oh, it didn't catch it. Uh, it's, of course, I need to make sure that I get the maximum value. Oh, well, well, now we got 77. And well, of course, at the same time, but the question is, where is my reference line? The, also, this level here is really depending on the spot. We should have an average in the surrounding area. And then we can separate and see how much higher the level of the tone is in comparison to the random noise. This sounds like a lot of work, especially at this run-up, to check always the maximum level at each RPM and then find the surrounding and it should be a standard automatized surrounding. What kind of surrounding is right? Is there any analysis that automatically do this for me? Of course, this idea is not that new. Okay, so we can close the idea of the FFT and directly jump to tone to noise ratio versus time. No more change, just calculate. And this is exactly doing what I'm talking about. That's what I want. So I get here a subtraction from tone to the random noise. And here you can see it goes from zero up to 18 decibel differences. So this is fine. We're done, aren't we? A 3D diagram has the advantage to see in an overview, does this analysis work on the issue I want to work on? Not just showing anything colorful, no, just exactly points out my problem. Okay, I see this, it works. The next step, if I look now to um, target line, I can't work with a 3D diagram. Is this yellow like the sun or yellow like a yellow bird? Yeah. No, you need a 2D diagram and the line, say if it's above, you're not good, okay? So let's go here and do the same analysis as a 2D analysis. It's all available here. Tone to noise. What is important is you should add a tolerance curve to these analysis. This is not standard, but it's really, it really makes a lot of sense to have this curve. Tone to noise, criteria, ECMA, and has this hat HDSX file forward. It's just a line. If you don't have this target line, uh, it's just a line. I, I will put a download in the description box. You can just download this is for free, okay? This is the standard. And um, let's do the same analysis again and see what's coming out of that. Okay, here we have this target line. What's quite interesting, at high frequency above one kilohertz, if the tone is higher or louder than eight decibel than the random noise, it's getting too tonal. You say, oh, this is a problem. At lower frequency, or tone or my ear is not that clear, uh, you need higher differences to feel this as a tonal problem, okay? What is quite interesting here is that our problem here at about one kilohertz does not come over our tolerance scheme line here. This fan ooh, does not jump over that one. What's wrong there? Can't be? Okay, I'll show you why. The thing is, our fan run up, if you just open it with a Mac editor, we can see it's a run up, the RPM signal changes. And this analysis, tone to noise ratio, expects constant situations, okay? It's not meant to have this run up. I can just simply show you, if I cut down my time, just in this start moment when this is almost constant RPM speed, and recalc again, then, I definitely jump over a 14 decibel above. So that's why we say this is a problem of tonal component. This is not a good noise, okay? Now it works. If I go back here and say uh, we go anywhere in between and have a wider 
RPM area in the same analysis and calculate, then there's nothing, nothing in there. Why does this happen? We have a tone all the way up in the beginning, in the middle, in the end, woo, every time it, it's a tonal component. And he said only in the beginning and not in the middle. What happened here is this is tone goes and it spits its frequency, its level in all the frequency bands. Is if I then pick one of these moments and say, okay, this is a level at this frequency and look in the surrounding area, we have the same noise level. And so the analysis said, there's nothing special, no tone coming out. Everything's fine. It's a good noise, which is not right. Okay. Of course, we can apply some settings to make this faster. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, there are a lot of settings in this analysis and that's what I don't like. One, two, three, four different settings. You can play around and say, okay, we have to make this a little bit faster and here and here and here. We have a, a board of setups and this has to be fit to the right run up situation. This is easy for a supplier to, to cheat. If he changes the run up speed, he will manage to come through the recording without any tonal components in the analysis. You say, we fulfill all the targets. I don't know what you do because you can't see the run up speed in the diagram later on. Okay, it's... <sighs> okay, there's also another effect which I don't like about tone to noise ratio. It's the total level. This analysis, just go there and take the tone and compare the difference in level to the surrounding noise and say, 10 decibel. And it doesn't matter how loud the level is. Is this true? It doesn't matter how loud the level is. It's just 10 and this is important. Let's check. Um, I just play back the speed here. Okay, maybe a fixed area here. And this is a normal noise. Well, it's tonal. And now I will raise the level of the noise and the tone at the same time. Just play it louder. For me, it's definitely more prominent, more annoying. It's just, ah, shit, shut off, I can't sleep at all. But if I go now to a lower level, like here, it's not that bad. I think I can sleep now, okay? So on human perception, there is a big effect how loud the total level is. And that's why there is another analysis which catch, catch this idea and go one step further. So the next analysis I'd like to show you is tonality following the Dean 45681. Dean means a lot of people have checked this analysis and say, well, this is reasonable, that makes sense, we use this, it comes down, okay, it's fine. Um, let's see what's coming out of that one. So we analyze this and, well, this is a weird signal. Where, where's my tone, where's my problem? Um, the problem here is, well, this analysis is based on tone to noise ratio and therefore it has exactly the same principal problems in the beginning. As we can still see here, we still have this fan run up and of course it also doesn't work on this changing RPM speed. But if I change here for high RPM situation when the RPM signal is almost constant and recalc, you can see then we get clear results here. And what is a big advantage is you don't need any ECMA standard tolerance scheme to um, be used in here. It's already integrated in the system. So yeah, I get the information which frequency creates a problem and there's a penalty is giving out. Penalty means if there's a tonal component in there, you can get a penalty from zero up to six decibel. So on the one hand, you calculate normal level versus time, just a level dB. And if there's a lot of tones in there, which arises the annoying effect, then you get an extra. Yeah, so 60 decibel in measurement plus six because it's an annoying signal. So then we have the effect of the, the overall level integrated. Simple way, but it works. It also works if you use this as a 2D diagram. Go here, here and calculate. And you can see at one kilohertz, we have a problem zone and here, we can, uh, because 20 decibel buff, 60 decibel penalty. But we can see there are more than just one tone in this noise. And that's the problem of these both analysis we just saw. They think the highest level is a tone 
and all the rest is the surrounding noise. And then you compare how big is the difference surrounding noise to the one tone. But in real life, you never have one tone. If you're talking about maybe a combustion engine, second, fourth, and sixth order going up, or a gearbox, they have all these teeth contacts, they have several teeth contacts, all have different orders. Everything is just loud at the same time, more than just one tone. And how can these analysts cope with this? Not good. To understand what's happening, if there are more tones at the same moments, we should understand how we can distinguish between different tones. I prepare here a sheet that explains it very well. Maybe you've seen this within some medical school. This noise comes in here, hits the eardrum, and goes over the steps into the cochlea. There's some liquid inside and a lot of hair sensors are in here. And if they are moved, they know by the position they are on the cochlea, which frequency is coming in, okay? That's the main idea. There have been a lot of analysis around this. It leads us to this famous bark scale. This goes from 1 to 24, called the critical bands. What's that? Um, to simplify it, we as human beings hear everything with not just one microphone, we have 24 microphones. And all these microphones are only watching a certain small frequency range, okay? Depending on the position on the cochlea, they say, okay, I only listen to one kilohertz, the next only listen to 1,300 hertz, like this, okay? And if there's a tone, they say, hey, they are here tone in my area. And the next one say, ah, here's some random noise in my area. So we get 24 reports to the brain, okay? So important is what's happening if we have two tones inside of one bark scale. What's happening is we only hear one because this sensor can only transmit one information. If there are two tones inside, the louder one will be transmitted to the, our brain. If they have the same level, the lower frequency will be reported. This is called masking effect. It's kind of data reduction. It's just there, okay? But this is a big difference. If we work with third octave spectrum, they would just add the same frequency because it's the same range as say, oh, this is really tonal effect. But in fact, really, we don't listen to this. We can't hear this one. It's a big difference. It's, it's important, especially on tonality analysis, to know, can we hear the other tone or not? Okay. And what's happening, if we move now these two frequency, depending on the, 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 the space which in between, if the other tone goes in the next bark scale, then we can listen to the second, the second one. Then we say, oh, there's a second tone. If it's still in the one, it's still in one scale, we only hear one tone. And it's so important to understand this. And we see it's not linear. As you can see here, this is definitely not a linear uh, sensor here. A lower frequency, extremely bad. If there are more frequency in 20, 30, 40 hertz, we only will hear one tone. And it goes a little bit finer grid here to higher frequency, but it doesn't match to a normal octave band. That's why octave band are not that famous. It's quite similar to a third octave spectrum. That's why third octave spectrum is so common because it's almost close. The idea is always to get close to the human perception. There are some ISO ideas to say, we have to summarize this and this and this. Everything is just the idea to get close to the official Bach scale. I say, why don't you use the Bach scale? Then you are perfect, okay? Especially on tonality, this is important. The dangerous thing is it doesn't match exactly, as you can see here, two kilohertz. That could be that there are two tones close to each other. We, as human beings, only hear one of the tones, but the third octave spectrum is a little bit this way and say, oh, we have two tones. And of course, if we say there's a tone, this is a random noise, so actually there's no tonality at all. Or even otherwise around, if the two tones are one third octave spectrum, we say, whoa, we a lot of energy in there. But we can hear there are two tones, not that high. So something happened, but nothing, it will never fit for sure, okay? That's why I say, if you're working about tonality problems, you need to use the Bach scale. Otherwise you get just something, okay? So let's close down all these analysis we have in here. Nope. And we go for the next analysis, a specific prominence ratio versus time as a 3D diagram. And the advantage of this analysis is you can select if you want to use third octave spectrum or if you want to add this critical band. So the way we human people can hear, we have the human perception in the analysis. So I like to use this one. And 
there's another option show tones only so that's why I have exactly the same analysis and also use critical bands and here I dismark this one to show you the difference and to speed up I have a third analysis also specific tonality let's see on the last time on the fan run up what this brings um, but of course I want to analyze this now on the full run up because these analysis are able to catch up even changing RPM speeds so let's calculate and uh, we take this off and there will be another mark analyzer coming up and as you can see here there's a run up but as you can see here maybe we just bring this up here here is nothing and all the time it's there is not there is there is not there well, what's happening up here um, the problem is this analysis only looks for perfect tones the same to the other analysis before it's a perfect sinus then that is a tone but in reality you don't have pure tones it's a big difference if there is a clear or a some rounding some broadbanded noise for example if you have um, a, a structure with resonates at 500 hertz and there is some random noise exciting this structure you will not get a clear narrow band tone of course 500 hertz gets the highest level but 490 and 510 hertz will also bring some resonance jump up in the structure you always get a little bit broad banded noise but as a human we are able to hear the main tone in there we say ah there is a tone forget all the rest there is a tone and it's annoying it's annoying okay so we are not that focusing on if it's a good tone or not if it's something like a tone in there we get sensitive on that okay so this is not reflecting this well that's why I have the other setup here take this off and just look for without not just looking for tones and here we can see okay this is fine we can say okay it starts low and then it's getting quite annoying in here that fits but with this setup of saying not that precise, not just tones, we could also some, get some random effects in here. For me, this is a little bit too much information. It's not fits to my perception, okay? Let's check the third analysis we have in here. Yes, that's what I want to see, okay? There's a tone and it's annoying in this area here and at the end it's totally annoying, okay? And all the rest is just almost black. That's a good one. How is it called? It's called Specific Tonality Hearing Model. Well, this is quite a new analysis. It's a good one. It starts from a completely different point. It goes from bark to bark segment and goes in every bark segment. Ask it, okay, what do you hear? What will you report to the brain? It say, ah, I just hear random noise. Okay, skip that. Next one, ah, I hear only random noise. Skip that one. Next one, say, I have random noise, but there's also a tone, so I will report a tone to the brain. Ah, interesting. Next one, random noise, nothing. Ah, I also have a noise. Ah, at six kilohertz, I have another tone. And you say, okay, if you have that tone, and at the same time you have this tone, well, this is definitely higher than that one, so you are almost nothing. So the brain will only catch that one. So exactly, it simulates like we are informed from our cochlea about the noise we are in, okay? That's why it works that good. And another big advantage is that we have, for the first time, a single value gives us the information about how annoying is this noise. Here we have a tonality about 2.53 TUHMS. What's that for? Well, this stands for tonality unit according to the hearing model from Professor Zotek. I just say tums. <laughs> well, it's reminding me a little bit like there's an Irish man talking about his tums. <laughs> okay. Um, the advantage is if we get one value, we so just by the value we can say if it's a good or a bad noise. As a rule of thumbs, <laughs> oh, what a joke! Okay, as a rule of thumb, we okay. As a rule of thumb, um, we can say at 0.1 thumbs is just starting to get tonal. You can see, okay, there is a tone. I just get it, but it's not a issue it's just getting to have its tonal effect okay at 0.4 we can say a tums of 0.4 is 
more tone. It's prominent tonal. We say, okay, this is a tonal noise. It's not a problem, but it's like you know, a gearbox, of course, always makes some tones. At 0.8 is my personal limit. I say, this is now a problem. But this is a limit you can set on your own, maybe at one, depending on the, the, the object you're measuring. Yeah? You can say, this is our limit. And just by this line, you can say if it's a problem, problem or is acceptable, just one number. Now that we have seen so many different analyses, make the ultimate praxis test. We use all of these analyses and use for the first time another example. This is a car engine starter. Okay, let's calculate it. Okay, on top uh, there is the FFT. Well, first just have a look. Well, let's see, here is something happening here. And um, there's a lot of energy. I can see here tone quite constantly. But if you listen to me <laughs> at this point, you might think, well, this is not louder than the other tones here, but in the surrounding area, there's no masking effect. So it could be that this causes a problem. Well, let's listen. So play back the file. What well, I hear a It's really annoying, okay? Let's see where this comes from. Uh, I normally use a playback spot. And here I can listen, okay, there's nothing. Yeah. There. This is that one. If I go here, for example, there's also a lot of energy, a lot of level, but it doesn't bother me at all. This is just random noise. It doesn't care, yeah? But here on top, this is your problem, okay? So it goes from there up to... Then you know, okay, by looking with the playback spark and say, okay, that is our issue. Now we're looking for analysis that directly gives me the information without listening that there is a problem, okay? So let's check out the next one. Um, that will be, I took this off, tone to noise ratio. <laughs> okay, there's, it is too fast. It's, it's the expecting long constant situation, okay? So skip this one. Tonality, here it's a little bit faster. It's another setup in the standard. Um, we get information, we get a penalty of three decibels, so there is a tone inside, and we get here the information about, yeah, at 2.5 kilohertz, we have this issue. Let's go back in the FFT to check this. Um, this tone here has a value about, yeah, exactly 2.400. So this is causing three decibel high values. This is working, but it only gives me this short information without really a cool diagram that tells me, okay, Try a little bit here, try a little bit there, understand what's going on. Um, so let's go on one further. Specific prominence, only tones. And here, yeah, here we can see, we can just listen here. Exactly here is that tone. But like before, it's not constantly in here. There's a lot of other spots which are highlighted, which is not giving me this pure information. This is the main problem, okay? Let's check the other setting. So not that precisely looking for pure tones. And here, yeah, there I can work with. I can see pew, pew, but also a lot of extra information. If I use this information to put it on a 2D diagram, he will edit all this data here and it gets, the information get lost because there's too much random effects around to make this more important. Let's check the last result here. Yes, that is what I want to see. Phew, phew, phew. This is the main tone, and this is tone also hearable in the same time, okay? And we have a total information about 0.587. So it's not always there. That's why it's reduced in its uh, annoying effect. But actually here in the mode when it appears, it's about one tones. I don't tell you, it's about 0. higher than 0.8. It's it's an annoying problem, okay, that we can see here. Let's check the next result. Uh, we can use here a wind turbine and, well, I have an electric engine also here. And we can also use, I think we can concentrate just on the last three. On the dust two, I think, has the most promising effects we have in here. And calculate, but I want to have a mark analyzer, the both analysis over each other, so we have a good way to analyze it. So two mark analyzer will come up. There they are. And I can use from the open documents just the last two 
and make a known group and say this should be side by side so I can compare it directly. And what I can see here is my wind turbine is here on top, specific prominence ratio, this classic version to analyze. Um, well, this is a clear signal here and it's get out of scale to what well, 28 is a high value. So this is a 28 decibel tonality here by this one. And on the other side, the electric engine runoff, same analysis, gives only a value from 16 decibel out of scale. So this is less, much less. Let's listen to that one. Yeah, okay, this is a tonal point. I can, I follow this one, okay. And now let's check the other one. Whoa! <laughs> okay, I didn't, I expect another effect. So this is definitely more annoying. It's just almost hurting. This is completely unacceptable, out of bounds, but the value is less. Let's check the other analysis. This is the uh, tonality model. The wind turbine get a value about two tons. And this one here, ah, shit, <laughs> 3.4. So this is much higher and that is reflecting my personal perception. Why is there this big difference? The fact is the specific prominence uses the bark scale. This is good, a good, important, necessary step, but it still calculates inside the level. So if there are two signals inside, it's calculating its level. It's not here what the loudness which is inside of each of the bark scales. So the masking effect is not used and that is so important. Okay, that's why we have completely yeah, wrong settings that come out of this using specific prominence. Okay, here I can see 1.3 as an average goes to 1.6. So of course not always it's that bad, but in total it's completely annoying and it has some really bad issues here. So this example you can see it's good to use a bark scale but it's had a high advantage if you also use the loudness for each single bark segment because exactly what we hear is then reflected in the analysis. Let's go for the next example. So not wind turbine or electric engine we just take a sprinter small device but can create noise. I think it's interesting to see all the analysis we talked about today in a direct comparison of this extreme example. So let's calculate, put all in one Mac analyzer, and the first analysis we will see will be the FFT versus time. Well, just have a look. Here's some noise repeating itself. We uh, have some clack, clack, clack effects, but um, he, well, this could create a problem, Do, who, 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 but nothing else. Now, now let's listen to it. Oh, this one. Okay, it's what you hear. A trick is, if you want to understand what the annoying problem is, try to imitate the noise that you hear. So this printer makes something like and then you know what is important. Okay, this is squeak, rattle noises. There's another analysis just concentrating on these effects. Um, not in this tutorial. This is another tutorial, okay, later. We talk here about tonality and there I hear softly a who and then weed, do weed, do weed. This is my printer, okay? So where is it? Not to be seen in the FFT. I just play back and try to find it with, hill, with the help of my playback spot. So on top there's nothing. Let's go down. Oh, hold on. It's too hard. There it is, okay? Here there's nothing. Ah, here, here, with the curtis here, it appears, so we can concentrate. There again. Okay, it's anyway here. Zoom in. Oh, yeah, okay, there, this little fella. This little fella causes the main problem. I haven't seen it before in the FFT, okay? Now let's check all the tonality analysis if they can directly tell me there is your problem, okay? Um, first of all, Zoom out again, go for a normal, so we go back here and check out now the next one. It will be tone to noise ratio. Okay, there's just nothing. This is too fast for this analysis. We know this. Okay, this is for constant situations. Okay, um, let's say the tonality and 
no decibel setup, no penalty, didn't catch it. Okay, um, specific prominence, only tones. Yeah, if you play back the file. There. If you know what you're looking for, you can see there and there is a noise, but it's not that prominent. <laughs> if you look, a lot of spots are in there. So not that clear that this is the main problem. So let's check out the specific prominence with a wider range. Yeah, and that's for the first time I can say, okay, just by the view, beep, 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 I can see there is a hot spot. But again, there's a lot of extra marked areas. So the average will also be not that clear. Let's check out the last specific tonality. Okay, there is clear. We have green, green, and this is the main causing problem this model. Okay. All right, and also we have a 0.48. That's what I told. On total, this printer appears as a non tonal. Rule of thumb, <laughs> remember 0.4. You say that now it's a tonal component, but in the short moment, we, we have something about one, so this is in this moment, it is too annoying. Okay, additionally, I can see that this analysis gives me exactly my perception do we do we do we? Okay, so I know it works exactly on the problems. This gives me the courage to say we can go over to a 2D diagram because I know the value which is here as a color will be presented now as a line going up and down. Let's check this. Maybe this is the summation point for all the people who have jumped over, over the full tutorial. Let's make a final summation. We have found a new analysis called specific tonality hearing model. Let's check this out. I just take a 3D diagram and there are 2D diagrams for that one. I just pick tonality hearing model versus time, so the total value of being tonal, and also tonality, the frequency, the annoying frequency, the problem of your measurement is just displayed in a graph. And then we use this, maybe, yeah, just on all these setups we have, all the measurements, and press calculate. Now for each of the recordings, there will be one mark analyzer, so five mark analyzer will now appear. So let's start with the first mark analyzer. This was the run up of the fan, as you remember. And here on the 3D diagram, we see the levels rising here and here again, the annoying effect. And this we can see now in the 2D diagram. It's a binaural recording, left and right ear. So there is a hill, it gets a little bit less, but in the end, it gets totally annoying. So this is not something you like. And you can see here, we are above three tums, so this is unacceptable. And on the lower diagram, I can see the main problem frequency. It starts from 400 Hz, 500 Hz, going up to 1 kHz. This is your problem line, okay? Next recording. Oh, this was an engine starter. And you can see here, this reflects now in the 2D diagram. But this area is above 1 tums, but it means it is annoying and something you should think about, okay? And here you can see the frequency. There's a small hangover and then it goes down here about 2500 hertz. This is your problem. In the end, this Okay, next one. Now it's getting getting funner, isn't it? Not fast. Oh, there's the wind turbine. Ooh, up and down, up and down, up and down, all around 1.6 to 2 thumbs. It is annoying. It is a problem, but we have a constant problem area about 700 hertz. There you should think about doing something, okay? Mark analyzer number five. Wow, shit. <laughs> This was the engine. Okay, here is the area zone. Above three tombs, unacceptable inside of a car, of course. This is just the test bench. Of course, there you can accept higher values. The big advantage is now you can set, okay, if you want to apply your gearbox in my car, then you have to follow just this line. You have to be below maybe 1.5 tombs, and then now then it will sound good according to tonal effects. It's much easier than talk about second order, fourth order, sixth order, octave bands, third octave bands, a lot of lines and hoping that if all the lines are <laughs> covered, then it maybe sound good. Just one thing and it, you're safe, okay? It's big advantage. And you can see here, your main problem zone is about two kilohertz. Sometimes if this drops, your area goes on higher orders, but the main problem line is this one. Okay, the last is we can play back. Do we do we the printer? 
there is a dude and the thief. Do we do we? There is the area zone. It's about get yeah, just getting annoyed, and here you get the frequency. Almost 100 hertz is the boom noise, and you get this beep at two kilohertz. Really soft tone, but it is the main common tone that you say this is annoying in the printer. Okay, now we get everything analyzed so fast. I think you feel that I like this new analysis. It's extremely powerful. It picks out in this full noise spectrum we have just these few tones which annoys me, which are representative for my noise problem. This is a turbo in the development process. Even that it's quite new, it's directly jumps from zero up to my top five favorites analysis that you should know as an acoustic engineer. Maybe you should make some video like my top five acoustic analysis for professional guys, something like this. <laughs> I think the people will like to see that. If I got the time, okay, stay tuned. <laughs> I can guess some of you might say, oh, this was quite interesting. Where can I find it? Okay, quite easy. Um, just here, analysis pull right mouse click insert and then you type in tonnel and there it is. Specific tonality, hearing model, 2D, 3D diagram, everything is in here over RPM as well. Okay. If you're not seeing this in your program, there could be two reasons for that. First, you have the wrong version. What you need is a Tamer Suite 9.2 for the least, this is 9.3, so from 9.2 on, this analysis is in there. So just update and you got it. If you have the right version but you can't see it, the second reason would be you not have the right licenses. What you need is 5001 or 5006, this is a standard pool analysis or the automation version. You got this, this is a standard if you have a Tamers. And additionally, only 5016. This is advanced psychoacoustic. And that's it. Only one license more and you got this powerful analysis in your pool. Well, <laughs> if you don't have it, you have all arguments on your side. If you have a tonality problem, get this one and you're ready to work. Yeah? Your chief will understand that. And third, you're looking in the wrong software. This analysis is developed by Head Acoustics. And that's why it's in the Tema Suite. It's not a problem. In this case, you can buy 5016 plus, like all the others, plus 5001, the basic analysis, and then you are ready to run. You don't need to switch over completely. Just buy one basic license like this, and whenever you have a tonality problem like this, you just take out this USB license and you can work fast, rapidly through that one. And if your college has a problem, you can just share it. Okay, it's just a, a special tool for this special kind of problem. Okay, I'm done. And now it's up to you. Homework. Try it. Take this analysis and use it on your own recordings. Probably have some tonality problems in the past, for sure. Just take these old recordings, maybe you have a test series, and then look for the thumps value you get from the step by step from all the measures you applied to your test object and see how this is documented now. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I will put out an email link just right there and you can answer them very really soon, okay? So then go out and play. Oh, it's already lunchtime. Sorry, they're waiting. Okay, bye. Thank you.